enjoying a cup of tea and I thank you for your patience. Okay, well here we are next day and uh, our uh, project is as we left it last night. I'll just get rid of the um, surgical tubing, the tape, and then we'll see what we got here. Okay, so it's not uh, pretty because uh, all of this does <clears throat> interfere with the finish on the on the stock, especially the uh, solvent. But what we'll do now is uh, work off some of the excess uh, epoxy with um, needle files and uh, with sandpaper of uh, various grits and then we'll carefully refinish uh, the head of the stock using linseed oil uh, cut with uh, mineral oil to make it uh, easier to to work with and uh, then the old girl should be presentable if not uh, as good as new. Uh, once we've done that we're gonna need to clean up the metal parts here they're still pretty grungy from probably a hundred years of, uh, of use and uh, reassemble the gun and that should take care of at least this part of it uh, the forend doesn't need any work and then we just have to focus on the barrels and get those um, back into uh, presentable shape and uh, that'll be about it the uh, gun will be good to go okay I said um, we'd cut the uh, mineral the linseed oil, linseed oil with mineral oil I meant mineral spirits. You don't want any oil in your stock, you want mineral spirits which is just a, um, a thinner so uh, using some little woodworking chisels and so on I'm going to just get rid of the epoxy here inside the inlading. There's some obviously some excess epoxy that's squeezed out that we couldn't really get at because the rubber tubing was in the way and I'm going to need to sharpen this chisel give me a second uh, the inletting on these older guns is usually quite tight so you can't have blobs of epoxy where your lock work goes because it'll interfere with the assembly and possibly with the functioning of the of the uh, lock work so we'll just trim that off where we see excess epoxy this side too so what we're doing here is restoring the inlading to what it was Fortunately, this um, gel epoxy doesn't tend to run. If you use a thin, thinner epoxy like the um, Acroglass kit or z epoxy or something similar to that, it runs all over the place. This, this product is actually made by um, Midway. It's an in-house brand. They call it Miles Gilbert, but it's what it is, Midway. And it's um, a gel type two part epoxy. 
Well, there wasn't too much to clean up on that uh, inside. I just need to obviously take the gun apart again and we need to make sure that um, there's no uh, epoxy overlapping any of the metal parts, otherwise we're going to tear up our good work here when we disassemble the gun. And I just use an X-Acto knife or a blade of some sort to make sure that the metal parts will will come free when we when we take the screws out. You want to be careful doing this. You don't want to do any damage to the metal. And uh, You don't want to create any gaps that you'll have to come back and fill again later. That should come apart though. There'll be some, uh, hopefully not a lot of uh, elbow grease necessary to get the gun apart. I did loosen the screws yesterday evening after the epoxy had partially set up, so I broke the bond between the epoxy and these screws, and that um, precludes that kind of problem. Notice I put all the parts in a jar. Uh, it's a really bad deal when you lose even a screw on one of these vintage guns, because you can't just re replace them. You have to make them, and believe me, it's easy if you leave screws and such small parts laying around on your bench while you're working, they end up on the floor and they get into nooks and crannies and you can't find them and uh, you just at best create a, a waste of time for yourself as you, as you crawl around looking for your parts. So I make a habit of putting them in a in a jar or sometimes a Ziploc bag um, so that I don't have to go looking for them on my hands and knees. Okay, so uh, one thing I do need is a little punch and a little hammer to um, Just knock the uh, trigger plate loose here. I might need to apply a little screwdriver there. Again, careful not to mess up uh, the inlaying the wood or anything. Well, that came right out. So there's your trigger plate. There's the rest of the action came right out. Having put uh, mold release on all these parts or release agent, they call it. All of these kits come with release agent. Uh, we saved ourselves um, the headache of gluing the action to the stock. So again, just get rid of some excess epoxy. There isn't much here because we didn't bed the action, we just glued the crack and some of it squeezed out here. Fortunately, the way this stock was cracked, the action, the action takes the place of a um, threaded pin. The action actually, the, one of the main action screws actually clamps the two pieces that, uh, together. So we don't need to worry about putting a pin into this uh, stock. It would be a little awkward because there's no nice meaty section where we could do that. Um, it's uh, all pretty thin in here. In fact, most of the wood in the head of the stock is gone due to the due to the design of, of this uh, action. There isn't a whole lot of wood left here. 
and what's left is all pretty thin, which is one of the reasons that uh, that the stock failed. So um, initially, you can file off this excess epoxy just to get everything a little bit flush. But stay away from the edges of the stock where the wood meets the metal because you don't want to um, create a situation where your wood is no longer proud to the uh, metal. That's considered a no-no in the gun restoration world. Just a little light sanding. For the most part this epoxy comes right off because the, the stock still had linseed oil on it and the epoxy won't stick to that. And if you want it to stick you've got to, you know, if you've got a crevice or something you want to fill, you've got to clean that surface of that wood off pretty well otherwise the epoxy won't take anyway. What we've got here is just a little bit of bleed. So I'm not going to touch the area that's Alright, so, so you can see the one main crack right here, it's, it's still evident there, it'll disappear as we, as we um, sand in some linseed oil. And uh, the other one comes through here. But apart from that, um, it's all pretty clean, there was a void under the stock here that we filled. I'm using a fairly fine file because I don't want to create file marks that I have to sand a lot of, do a lot of sanding to get rid of. I'm just uh, cleaning it up. And uh, oh, we missed something inside here. This is, has to come out. Otherwise, the gun's not going to. Go back together. You may wonder whether this um, stock will be uh, sufficiently strong to be usable. Normally, the answer is a yes because super glue is actually stronger than wood. So the parts that were super glued back together again are. Um, going to be pretty strong. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting a little bit of uh, dilute linseed oil. It's got to be boiled linseed oil otherwise it won't dry and it, I dilute it uh, one to one or even two, uh, one, to th one to two parts uh, with mineral spirits. Um, that makes it more liquid and um, it dries faster that way so you can put successive coats on uh, you know, each day, and it works into the wood better too. Uh, it's better absorbed by the wood. This is 180 grit. I'm just cleaning up the areas that uh, need it by lightly sanding in this uh, finish. I'm, I'm going to try to stay again away from the areas that, from the checkering and from the areas that uh, butt up against the metal. Um, what this does is it uh, smooths, of course, um, and then it fills any open pores with uh, a mixture of a slurry of, of walnut dust and linseed oil. And it's the way these stocks are finished anyway. They're, these hand rubbed linseed oil stocks have. Um, the oil sanded in initially to fill the pores and then once the pores are filled the uh, finish is um, just rubbed on by hand in very thin coats uh, 8 to 10 8 to 10 layers that has to be absolutely dry before you add any more otherwise you end up with a sticky mess I'm going to uh, probably touch up the checkering in this area here so you know, probably, you don't want to sand it too much because it's going to change the color of the wood. 
this old seasoned wood is very dark chocolate color and if you sand it too much it, it'll lighten up to the point where it'll look kind of uh, odd. So you just want to work up a tiny amount of slurry there to to uh, refill the um, pores and smooth everything up without taking off much wood at all. Again, don't mess up your checkering unless you're prepared to rechecker it. And that's checkering is not a job for amateurs. That's something that uh, looks terrible if it's done by an amateur. Um, if you have to get into the checkering, then that's fine. You're going to have to rechecker it. In fact, it's a good idea. It's actually good news if the um, crack is in the checkering because you can make it almost totally disappear uh, when you rechecker it. This one's not. It's in the head of the stock and head of the stock. Uh, it's not inside the checkering at all. All right, so that's 180 grit. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this slurry here dry on the head of the stock. And when it's dry, I'm going to wipe it off and then um, use a finer grit and repeat. And then I'll just apply some oil by hand without any sanding to um, restore the sheen. Now, the, the balance of the stock is not in bad shape. It's just a bit uh, dinged up. And the finish is kind of um, scuffed and darkened in places. So if you were to totally refinish this, you'd need to strip off this finish and then repeat the sanding in of the oil and so on. Uh, that's a um, debatable thing, you know, on a collectible gun, originality is everything. So you don't want to um, refinish a gun that doesn't need to be refinished. I'm just going to... Uh, give the surface a, cl a, a quick clean with um, some some lint, some uh, lacquer thinners just to get the, the, the dirt off basically because through handling and what have you these stocks do get kind of dirty and grungy and we're not going to take much of the finish off at all This lacquer thinner does take off just about anything in fairly short order. If you want to steam out the little dings, then you have to get rid of the, the uh, finish because the steam won't penetrate the wood as long as there's uh, linseed oil or especially not if there's urethane or some, some uh, modern finish on it. But, um, you really don't want to, you know, that, that's a total restoration when you start removing and steaming and what have you. Now you're, now you're talking about a total restoration and your gun's going to look like it was restored. It's not going to look uh, original at all. So I've cleaned that up a bit. What I'm going to do now is just very lightly, with some very fine grit paper, I'm going to repeat the um, the rubbing. I've got some 600 grit paper here. And I'm going to cut myself a small piece. That I'm going to use to just rejuvenate the finish on the buttstock a little bit. I'm folding it into four piece, four squares here. I'll use them separately. And I'm going to um, I'm going to clean them with lacquer thinners first because they this is not. Uh, This is not um, new paper here. 
And um, if it has any metal dust on it, that metal dust will um, blacken your wood. So I don't know what this was used for. I don't recall, but uh, I'm just going to clean it off. paper will cut a little bit better when it's clean too. Obviously the real solution is to use a brand new piece of paper but uh, I don't want to go scrounging around looking for us a new one. I've just got this stuff at hand so I'm going to use it. I'm going to stay away from the checkering, rub it in in a circular motion. What that'll do is it'll just uh, complete the cleaning process uh, I just want to take out any dents or dings, but it'll complete the cleaning process and replenish the oil in the stock the way it was done originally. This is the way the stock was finished, so I'm not doing anything that wasn't done back when the gun was built. This will also bring out the the finish a little bit. The grain. I mean, the, it'll, it'll it'll improve the f visibility of the figure in the wood. Now, there's a stock shield here that's a bit dull, and I'll just go over that lightly. Most of these shields are um, silver, and they do tarnish. Uh, you don't want to be working up a silver slurry because you're going to get again. You're going to get silver in the in the uh, pores of the wood, which is not intention, the intent here. I, I just put to take that out. That's easy enough to do. Because it will just get in the way. All right. We've got some fairly nasty dings here in the heel of the stock. That wooden steam out. There's only one way to get rid of dings like that, and that's to file down the stock. And you'd have to file it down quite a bit. And we're not going to do that. Uh, it's got a metal butt plate here. You'd have to file the metal butt plate, and it just wouldn't look right. And you know, those things really add character to an old gun like this. So we just leave them where they are. They are purely cosmetic. There's no structural issue or anything whatsoever back there. Best just to leave them be. They would not steam out there too. Uh, they gouges, I guess, more than pressure dings. Pressure dings will steam out. You know, if you strip the finish completely off a of stock using, for example, um, paint stripper, that's you need to do that for urethane finish. Or varnish finishes. Um, you can wash the, the stock in mild soap and water after you've done that, and that will that washing will have the same effect as steaming. It'll it'll get rid of most of all of the um, the dings, so that only the deepest ones remain. And uh, you know that's appropriate if you're doing a full wood refinish. And you've decided uh, to to hell with originality. The full wood you finish will be obvious. You know it'll, the gun will look like a new gun. The wood will be much lighter. It'll, it'll be perfect or near perfect. There'll be no there'll be no dents or scratches in the stock. And that looks pretty, but frankly, it's um, it's not going to help the value of a collectible gun. What I'm doing here is really more of a cleaning than a refinishing. Just clean that surface film off. Stay away from the checkering because you'll just fill up the lines with 
slurry if you get into the checkering and uh, then you'll have to clean them out which is this pretty much the same as recutting and that's laborious you do not remove a butt plate when you uh, refinish a stock because otherwise you want have a flush situation you need to keep the butt plate on to keep everything flush nothing looks worse than a gun with a butt plate or a pad that hangs over the edges of the wood and this is just a steel plate and if the edges get a little bit bright that's not going to be the end of the world they will tarnish in about a year or so Okay, well, I think that's about uh, enough of that for the purpose at hand. I'm now going to clean that off because as I say, what I'm doing here is initially is cleaning, not uh, refinishing. So I'll clean that dirty slurry off. I won't clean the area of the stock head though because I want that slurry to dry in the pores and get hard before I take it off. Um, otherwise, the, I'll just open up the pores again if I clean all that off now and it's still still uh, wet. You can see I'm starting to get a little bit of striping showing through here. That was, uh, was kind of lost in the original finish. And. Uh, Some of these areas here um, look a little dark, and that's because the uh, the wet linseed oil is actually soaking into the wood there because the old finish was mostly gone in those areas. And there's really nothing you can do about that other than a full refinish, you know. So I'll just let that dry again over overnight. I'll come back tomorrow and sand that again with some oil and some lighter, finer paper. And at that point, the second sanding, I'll actually rub everything off. And then from then on, if the pores are filled, all I will do is um, apply it oil by hand, rub it in by hand, and uh, give it several coats until it looks uh, good. On old wood like this, you know, three or four coats starts to look okay. On new wood or wood that's been totally we finish you talking a dozen coats before you get the, the surface sheen back. Okay, so that's all we're going to do today. Um, and uh, I will then uh, redo the, the oiling tomorrow and I'll put the gun back together in a few days and, and show you what it looks like then. It's kind of boring to, to watch this over and over again because it, it is a boring tedious, messy process, but uh, it has to be done. And uh, then uh, I'll also take care of the barrels uh, and then she'll be done. So once again, thank you for your patience.